everyone, today let's look at Chile that used to be the darling of bond markets, but that is so far this year at the bottom of the pack of the worst performers in Latin America and is even the last among the investment grade emerging issuers. Its dollar denominated debt has fallen by nearly 18% so far this year. So are there worries about the country's solvency? No. And far from it, as Chile remains a solid single A rated country, and it has also demonstrated years of timely payment and tight fiscal policy. The adoption of a new constitution that should offer more social services and increase fiscal spending is mentioned, but the relative stability of the country's risk premium does not really validate this assumption. So how to explain the correction? Chile is in a way a victim of its own success. This success has enabled it to borrow very regularly on the bond markets in the recent years and on favorable terms. Small coupons on particularly long maturities up to 50 years. And the current rise in yields is particularly painful since debt of Chile has an average maturity of over 18 years and a duration of 11 and a half years. In comparison, Mexican debt rated triple B fares better with an average maturity of more than 20 years, but a duration of only 10 and the country is down 16%. So the differences are explained by the difference in the average coupon 3.2 in Chile, 4.5 in Mexico. In the high yield category, Brazil, double B minus, also offers an interesting illustration. With an average life of 11 years, but a duration of seven years due to a high average coupon, Brazilian bonds only lost 8.7% this year, half of the loss on Chile. So if long maturities and small coupons are the best things for investors in cycles of falling yields, the backlash is painful. Moreover, with the exception of only one bond, Chile has only issued ESG format since 2019. It's even the first country to have issued a sustainability-linked bond. And in this market, investors tend to be institutional, and so they favor longer maturity and buy-and-hold approach. These investors are also willing to pay a green premium, what we call a greenium, which means that they accept to be paid slightly less than unconventional debt. Both these market and format conditions have supported Chile's success. However, they do not make the bond immune. The risk premium of the 2031 conventional bond has the same trajectory as the 2032 green counterpart. Finally, whatever the format, when yields rise, duration becomes the number one enemy. And in order to reduce risk, investors sell even their darlings. Thank you. 